Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Hey there, and welcome back to the Soul Seeker Podcast. My name is Sam Kaber. I am your host, along with my co-host in this special series, Alicia K. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. What I want you to know is you just stumbled on into episode number five of a six-part series. So if you don't go back and listen to episodes one through four, then this isn't really going to make sense. So I would recommend to hit pause, go back to episode one. You can find it in show notes for this six-part series that covers the six-step breath process in my new book, Overcome the Overwhelm. So what you're about to hear is step number five with my co-host, Alicia Kay, where we're going to be unpacking the fifth step in the six step breath process. This is something that was initially on Promo Corner's website and their channel. And I repurposed it to come on to the Soul Seeker podcast as well. If you're new to the show and you want to give back to the show, easiest way you can give back is by simply leaving a five star rating and review. If you dig what you're hearing, consider subscribing as well. And with that, I hope you enjoy this episode where we're unpacking step number five of the six-step breath process for inner peace. Welcome back to Overcoming Overwhelm, this six-week mini-series that is sponsored by Promo Corner. I am your host, Sam Kabert, and with me is Alicia Kay. We're so excited that you're here. And just as a reminder, if you're brand new to this series and you haven't watched any of the earlier ones, please just make sure and go back to episode one. Because if you just jump in at episode five, it's not going to make any sense. Each of these steps are compounding. They're sequential. They build off of one another. So go back to the beginning. Having said that, this is the six-step breath process, which is the new framework in my brand new book called Overcome the Overwhelm, which you can find all the information about my book at my website, samkabert.com. And the first four steps, we did some heavy, some dense, some deep work. And like I said in the last episode, really, it's called shadow work. You know, it's that stuff that we don't want to feel, but we need to feel it to process it, to heal it and to move forward. So that perfectly gets us into step five, which is lighter. It's uplifting. It's alchemization. It's alchemy. Really, if you're into these type of words, you know, it's it's transformation. And step five in the breath process is just that. It's transform into empowering beliefs. Because let's go backwards, right? We experience an emotion or a trigger, something came up, right? That we don't want to feel. Step one, we're going to breathe to slow down. Step two, we're going to relax to feel it. Step three, energy to reveal. What is this energy within revealing to you? Is there a lesson? Getting curious, right? Step four, is accept to surrender, going deeper, being with those parts of yourself, really, really sinking in deeper. And finally, once we've accepted and surrendered and understand the lesson that's coming through, now we can alchemize it and we can transform it into something positive. Now, I have a huge chip on my shoulder personally for the the toxic positivity movement because there is 
so much out there in terms of like, just feel good, just be happy. I even went to a training once, a yoga training where I, I don't align with this belief, but some people feel this way. Never entertain a, a negative emotion. Never feel it. Always be happy. Always be excellent. You know, and I'm like, nah, that's not how it works. And for those of you listening that have checked out the first four episodes, you know why. So we're not going to go and unpack all of that. Right now, it's like, okay, now that we've allowed us, ourselves to feel these denser emotions, and instead of just stacking positive affirmations on top of negative emotions and allowing that energy to get stored on the body and showing up in a false, uh, a false way of just acting like everything is good, we're being honest with ourselves, right? And we've processed this certain thing in this two-minute process of the six-step breath process where now... We can bring in the positivity and the empowering beliefs. So this is something that I started teaching my clients uh, after I was working on it for myself last year and had profound results. I did a free five-day challenge called Shatter Limiting Old Stories. And the premise of that really is what led into the six-step breath process. Because the whole thing is like, okay, let me feel what's coming to the surface. And maybe it's like, I can't do this right? Whatever the situation is. First thing that just came to my head right now. Okay. So in the first four steps, feel what it feels like to not be able to do something, right? Fully surrender to that, accept that. Then now at this fifth, fifth step, we're going to transform that into something positive. I, I can do this. I do believe in myself and I'm feeling that more than a positive affirmation. It's like feeling is the secret. There is a spiritual teacher from the early 1900s. His name is Neville Goddard. These days, a lot of people know Dr. Joe Dispenza. Both of them and plenty of other teachers talk about similar things, but it's how our feelings actually create our reality. Now, here's the thing. We have over 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 80% of those thoughts are from the day before. And 90% of those thoughts are negative. But we don't actually understand that because it's all happening on a subconscious level. And our subconscious mind makes up about 95% of our awareness, meaning that if we don't address any of this, we're living in a negative feedback loop from the day before. And most of us aren't even aware of it, nor do we know why. So by doing the first four steps in the six-step breath process, we are addressing all of that so that we can let the 5% of our conscious mind dictate how we want to move through the world. And this is where we're transforming into empowering beliefs and really feeling it because it's not enough to say, I am a good person, uh, I'm a good person, people like me and darn darn it, whatever Stuart Smalley said. I don't remember that whole skit, but I think a lot of us remember on SNL, like you know, where he's looking in the mirror and just saying the positive affirmations. It's like, you gotta actually feel that. So with all of that, I'm going to slow down here and pass it over to Alicia and hear what's coming up for you. Yeah, I think it makes so much sense. And <clears throat> I love Tony Robbins saying is like, you can't stand at your garden and chant, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, right? Like it just doesn't work because the way that we feel about ourselves and the thoughts that we have about ourselves essentially is a set of old programs, old beliefs, outdated systems that we still use to run our narrative on a daily basis, I teach something that is like the law of polarity, right? Like you never want to get in, into an argument or a debate with the negative thoughts that you have in your brain. It just doesn't work because it's just going to keep stacking up the evidence and stacking. Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what about when you did this, right? So you just get into this loop with your brain around trying to convince yourself that no, I'm not lazy, right? Like you just don't want to do that. So you have to notice the negativity, yes, but there's also the law of polarity, which means the equal and opposite are also true, right? So just like your brain can stack up a ton of evidence to say you're lazy. Well, actually, we're probably talking to a bunch of super like high end achievers right now if you're overwhelmed and you're super stressed at work, right? So maybe the concept in your brain is I never have enough time right? Like you're constantly like telling yourself that. So you're essentially running on a stress response. And yes, that there maybe that's true, but the equal and opposite is always true. 
right? So what can you say to yourself that actually the brain can understand and hold as valid? Yeah, I may not have enough time, but I always get everything done. Right. So you add in the positivity, not to like negate or dispute or combat the negative, but it actually is the equal and opposite polarity that you can hold as truth. Right. So let me then ask myself the question, when have I always gotten everything done? Right. Your brain can list the evidence of the positive thing so you can start to operate in a new way instead of that old program or unconscious subconscious belief system that we have right so always add in the equal and opposite to that right so whatever negative thought you're having make sure that you combat it with something else that actually is truth and is true that you can hold on to that the brain can understand Awesome. That That's so good. And uh, the point, uh, I just want to highlight the point of going back to a time that you did do something uh, positive for whatever that situation is. And for me, I use that so much. It helps me incredibly because when we are down in the dumps, it's almost like, no, I, I, I just can't. You can't see a way through. But uh, easy, like just a uh, uh, way to start to climb out of it is looking at past evidence. And when you see that past evidence where you were able to do something that is semi-similar, then you can start to build on that. So I just want to highlight that. Um, thank you, Alicia. That's awesome. As, as always, guys, we have homework for you. So nothing new here. This one's going to be pretty simple. It's to create an I am empowering belief or statement. One that you could use if you're having trouble with it is something that I like to come back to time and time again. And that is, I am always being supported and guided because I am someone who tends to just look at sales projections. And, and I know I'm speaking to an industry of salespeople, right? And I really focus on the number, right? And a lot of my goals, I wrote a book. My second book was called The Written Goal. And my goal setting back then in like 2018 that led me to building a million dollar company with just virtual assistants, no employees, just myself, was creating these sales goals. And I, I would hit those goals, not always, but I, I was building uh, every year and definitely um, built my business up, right? Using this practice. But what it wasn't doing was it wasn't addressing how I want to feel. So at the end of the day, like when I've really done this work and unpacked it, I've been like, okay, yeah, I want to build a million dollar company. Oh, I did that. What did I really want? And what do I really want right now? Oh, it's that I want to feel supported. And I want to know that I'm being guided as well, whether it's uh, by my mentors, my peers, uh, my, my burning desire to go back to Napoleon Hill type teachings, right? but I really want to feel supported at the end of the day. So many of us have money fears because we are in fear, right? That we will not be able to support ourselves and our families. And at the end of the day, if the feeling really is the true, um, uh, the true barometer here of uh, how we, why we create these goals. So the last thing I will tell you guys as well is about the theta brainwave state. I'm not going to go deep into science here, but normally when we go to sleep and when we wake up in the morning, our brain is in what's called a theta brainwave state. You can also get into that through breath work, meditation, and other things like that. A simple little hack, if you like that word, is when you go to sleep at night, repeat this empowering statement. And the reason why it's so important to repeat it when you're in the theta brainwave state is because that is when the mind, the brain, is actually able to create new neural pathways and create new neural networks. What the heck does that mean? Basically, it means we are creating the version of ourself that we actually want to become. And not only are we saying this, but we're feeling it. So when you go to bed at night, this is literally something I'll do. I'm like, I go through the first four steps, and then I get to the fifth step, and I'm like, okay, how do I all feel? What, what am I calling in? And then I'll just kind of drift to sleep saying whatever it is. In this case, I am always supported or I'm always supported and guided, right? And then when I wake up, same thing. I'm someone who loves hot, cold therapy. So the gym, I don't go to the gym to lift weights. I go to the gym to use the sauna, the steam room, and the cold plunge. 
And when I'm doing these things, I'm going through these statements. And this is literally that what has changed my life to be able to catch how I feel in the moment, walk through the first four steps, and then get into the fifth step of how do I actually want to feel. Now, a lot of people know this. I talked about a few podcasts I wrote about in the book, but in 2023, it was the most challenging year of my life. And I, I'm not going into the details now, but at the same time, I was able to be like, huh, even though like on a physical grounded, like 3D perspective, this is the most challenging year in my life. Day to day and moment to moment, I feel great. And what I realized was because I was doing the work that we're sharing with you right now, which is what inspired me to write a book about it. So at the end of the day, yeah, there's, it's so easy to get distracted by other things. But if you follow these steps, it will create that transformation. I guarantee that. So your homework is to create one empowering belief and then say it as you go to bed and when you wake up in the morning. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. In the next one, we're going to wrap it up with the final step of the six-step breath process. Again, my name is Sam Kabert. You can find my book at my website, samkabert.com. The book is called Overcome the Overwhelm. And if you'd like to connect with Alicia, her website is aliciakcoaching.com. That's K-K-A-Y, aliciakcoaching.com. Thank you, Promo Corner, for sponsoring this show. And we'll see you in the final episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode today. And I want to give a special shout out to my co-host, Alicia K. It was so much fun unpacking all of this with her. And I really appreciate you, Alicia. So thank you for coming and sharing your wisdom. Thank you to Lori Moore and the team over there at Promo Corner for having the idea to host the six steps on their platform, which is now being repurposed onto the Soul Seeker podcast. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please consider sharing this episode, this this podcast with anyone in your network that would benefit from it. If you haven't left a rating and review, please consider that as well, as it's the show's mission to really do our part to raise the collective consciousness from this fallen state of humanity. So if you're down with that mission and you want to help to raise the collective consciousness from this fallen state, please just consider subscribing, rating, and review as it helps the show grow. I'll see you on the next episode for step number six.